Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to episode one of Kakegurui Twin. So this is a six-episode um, spin-off series of the normal Kakegurui series, which currently has two seasons and hopefully gets a third somewhat soon. I know the manga is like bi-weekly or something, and so they have to uh, they have to wait till there's enough material, but still. Um, this is a prequel spinoff that centers around Mary Sautome uh, and her early days at the Academy. Um, so if you remember seeing my reactions to uh, Kakegurui previously for, um, for the second season, which let me see here, I did back in 2019. I wanted to get uh, exactly when I, got, when I did that. Uh, yeah, that was early 2019. Um, you remember, I, I'm actually a pretty big fan of this show. Um, because it's absolutely batshit crazy. <laughs> uh, between the expressions, the animation, the death games themselves, and just the overall general insanity of it, it's really fun. And yes, there is a lot of fan service in it. It, it gets needlessly sexual. And I, I've talked about before how fan service bothers me when it feels out of place and like it's just there for the sake of itself rather than serving the plot. And I think the reason why the fan service in this doesn't bother me as much is because this is clearly a satire on this entire kind of thing on gambling on death games on over sexualized anime characters and stuff it, it's clearly meant to be a satire a comedy um in that regard but it also takes itself seriously enough to where the death games and all still have that bite to them they still feel intense um and I like that it can kind of balance that out. But, like, you see something like um, Kaiji Ultimate Survivor, and that's definitely a more serious, natural take on this kind of same thing. Kakigurui is over the top, intentionally so. And because of that, I, I don't really take it as seriously in, in those regards. I still like the characters, I still like the storylines that they go they go with, but I, I see it as a satire, and that's why it doesn't bother me as much. When, when a series is very obviously comedy or satire, and, and that's and, and the sexuality is part of the joke or the statement being made, I can usually excuse it a lot more. Um, I also mentioned in my Kill a Kill reviews, I really don't like the sexualization of minors. Um, and technically speaking, these characters are minors. They are teenagers. Um, unlike in Kill a Kill, though, it's not an integral part of the, of the series. And again, it's meant for comedy and satire here more than for the sake of like in Kill a Kill, where it's trying to like send some kind of body positive sex positive message um plus the sexuality in this series doesn't go into next to nudity basically um it's just a lot of like heavy breathing and blushing and close-ups on lips and stuff like that girls holding each other suggestively it's it's stuff like that that it, it's not as bad it's just the way it's presented that almost kind of makes it feel worse but kill a kill it actually is much worse in terms of that and again the satire comedy aspect of this series is what saves it from really being bad in that 
Um, it, it's it's kind of the same thing with uh, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, um, which again is another satire. So it, it's clearly the point that they're going with. Um, it's the only kind of case where I, I really feel like I'm okay with that being shown. Because it's not meant to be taken seriously. It's not meant to be seen as a positive or anything. Plus, like, all the characters in this series, in Kakigurui, are fucking crazy as shit. Uh, <laughs> I think the only character in the main series who's not is the main male character, and he's honestly as boring and milk toast as they come. That's literally the point of his character. He's, he's boring. He's generic as fuck. That's literally his character because he's there to kind of play off of and almost be a straight man to Yumiko, who is exceptionally psychotic, um, as well as all the other characters. But we don't have Yumiko in this one. Uh, again, it focuses on Mary. Uh, who is a major character in the original in the main series um, and the first uh, antagonist in the series right from the beginning of episode one um, but she ends up becoming an ally to Yumiko and even teams up with her on a couple of occasions so here we kind of get her backstory and I, I don't know all the details behind this I obviously never read the manga um, so I'm just kind of basically going off of the little bit that I know. I did see the trailer, and there is another girl who seems to be a major character in this who has a massive, massive fucking gay crush on Mary. Like, I, like the, ori the main series, the original series, is super fucking gay. It's, it's, it does not hide that. But my god... Just from the trailer alone, it's like they've gone to Revolutionary Girl Utena uh, levels of blatant. Uh, complete with this girl calling Mary her prince and having imagery associated with that. Um, it's, it's ridiculously funny in that regard. But, I mean, I, I also like queer representation. I always have. And even if, again, every character in this is fucking insane, it's still really cool to see that they're just kind of embracing that. Um, I, I'm, I'm definitely interested to see um, how many of the characters we know from the first two seasons of the main series are in this. I assume most of the student council, if not all of them, are going to be here. I remember in the trailer, we did see um, Karari, I think her name is, Karari Momobami. And we saw the crazy girl who eventually gets the eye patch. We saw her. Um, I'm not sure if we saw any of the others, though. But I'm definitely interested. Now, it sucks that this is only six episodes. Um... But again, it's a spinoff. I assume the manga spinoff is not, like, too long itself. It, it, it's basically some more Kakiguri content to kind of, uh... To kind of satiate our fix. While we're waiting for Season 3 still. Um, and, and I can appreciate that. So, we're gonna get into this. We're gonna hope for the best. And hopefully this ends up being just as good as the main series. So, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and it fades back in, everything for that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in three two, one, now. Good start. Very good start. Um, and like I said in the reaction, it does kind of make me wonder what is going to end up corrupting Mary. Because as we see at the beginning of the first season of the main series, Mary has fully been enveloped by the spirit of the Academy. She, she's a bitch. Just plain and simple. She's a fucking bitch. 
Um, but that's the point, because as we see throughout the season and then into season two, she, uh, she starts to change after her initial loss to Yumiko. And we see her start to open up more and become nicer and even work with Yumiko on a couple of occasions. Um, and in season two, we even get to see her kind of showing some kindness and everything towards the, uh, uh, the sister of the president of the student council, Karari, Karari's sister, I can't remember her name, uh, but the one who normally wears the mask. We see Mary show her some uh, kindness and everything and start to work with her. Um, I think my, my guess is just that Mary's going to realize that she can't be nice here, that that's not going to cut it, that she has to be ruthless, and she's going to get enveloped in it. I think that's just the case of how it's going to go down. Um, but it, it shows that Mary has always kind of had that propensity for good, I guess you could say. Um, being better than the others, at least. So we find out in this that Mary's initial goal for coming to the Academy was to basically give a big middle finger to the social elite and everybody who basically says that your future, your life is determined by these factors that are out of your control. Your wealth, your status, your position, um, and factors like that. She's basically saying, I'm going to prove that that's not always the case. I'm going to prove that I can, like, succeed despite that. I'm going to be the best I can be in spite of your rules on life. She came to this school to specifically basically say, fuck you, I'm going to make it on my own. Despite not coming from a wealthy background, at least not as wealthy, despite not being like this big deal. Like she comes to school with a water bottle, a thermos, and it's like even that's pointed out that that's unusual there, that that's not a normal thing. And, and it's pointed out that Mary just doesn't have the, the money that the others do. She still has some level of money, we can see that, but she's nowhere near the level that this school is known for. And we kind of see that it's all about her trying to make her name, in a way. Trying to, again, get past that idea of uh, her status and natural money and everything controlling her life and uh, her, her future. Which is a big deal in the Kakegurui series. Um... So, we also have some other characters in here. Um, we have Suzura, who is the uh, secondary main character, our deuteragonist. And she is kind of this shy, cutesy girl. Seems actually very, very nice. In fact, she's almost kind of like... Um, almost kind of like our main male character from the main series. I can't remember his name. Uh, but, except she actually has more of a personality. <laughs> um, and I think she does a, a good job. Um, I think she's very... She's very interesting, plus her massive, massive gay crush on Mary is honestly kind of cute. Um, Susan in general is kind of cute. She, she has a very cutesy attitude, a very cutesy personality. And it just, it does make me wonder what happened to her. Why isn't she in the main series? Especially seeing through this episode, she becomes friends with Mary, and Mary even basically admits she's going to be fiercely protective of her. She wants her to get rid of her mittens tag, and 
not be basically amounting to a slave anymore because she feels that that's not okay for her friends to be. And yeah, some of that kind of comes down to she doesn't want to be associated with that, but you could tell Mary just, he, she doesn't want her friends to be in that position because she just doesn't want them to have to deal with that shit. Uh, we also get a couple other characters in here. Um, we have Mikara, who I believe was the girl we saw at the beginning, actually. Uh, the one who lost to Mary. Let me check here. Um, okay, hold on. That was in, like, the little preview part. <sighs> no, I, I was wrong. That was Coco, Kokoro Ayora. The one who was, like, uh, messing with Suzuro. Okay, so that was a completely different character. Okay, I, I, I thought it was the same girl because she had the same hair color and everything. Um, but either way, Mikra is a house pet for our main villain of the series, Sachiko. Sachiko is, let's be honest, she's a bad bitch. Uh, she has that very high and mighty personality, and she flaunts the shit out of it. Like, I... I I don't know how else to describe it than she has she has a very loud personality. She's very intense, very intimidating, and fully owns it. Uh, Mikura is just kind of her little lapdog who tries to cheat for her. Uh, and Sachiko seems to let it go in the end, uh, because things worked out in her favor. Then we have Yukimi, who I believe is, uh, yeah, Yukimi Togakushi, yeah. She's the, uh, the literary club, uh, president who faces Mary in this, in this gamble. She's shown in the ending, and I've seen her in the advertisement images for the series, so I know she's going to be a continuing character. Um, she seems very shy, timid, nervous. Now the question is, with this loss, she officially becomes a personal house pet to Sachiko. So are Mary and Suzura going to have to try and win her back? Is that where this is going to go? Um, because, again, she's clearly a major character here. Now, another thing I want to note is that we are obviously watching the Japanese. Um, because that's what I've been watching in my first view-throughs of this series since the beginning. Uh, and with our reactions to Kakigiru EXX, we did that as well then. However, there are some really great VAs in the dub. Uh, Mary is voiced by Kira Buckland, uh, who you might know recently as Jolene Cujo from Jojo Stone Ocean. Um, but she's done a lot more than that, mind you. Uh, Sachiko is voiced by uh, Amber Lee Connors, who has done a lot of notable roles. And then there's a character who we haven't met yet who is voiced by Anaïs Quinones, uh, who I met at Yomacon last year, and who is amazing in pretty much everything she does, um, let's be honest. Um, but there's also Natalie Rose, Morgan Berry, and Susie Young in this as well. And Alex Lay? Is it Lay or Lee? It's L-E. So I'm not sure. But either way, um, a great cast no matter what. And I'll definitely be checking out the dub. I'm just going to be reacting to the, uh, to the Japanese. So, yeah. Um, but I really like this. I really like this. 
I thought it was a very good start. Uh, uh, it, it reintroduced us to Mary well, as well as showing how she used to be. It gave us the general premise for what these six episodes are going to feature. And it it was a lot more it, it was a lot more held back than Kakegurui normally is. Like the expressions, they they started to climb up, but not quite reaching the level that the main series is known for. Um you got a little bit of that classic music and intensity in this. But again, it never quite reached the peaks yet. And it's six episodes, so they might be trying to like build up to that a little more. Um, maybe as part of showing the possible degradation of Mary as a character. Um, we see at the beginning, like her expressions aren't as intense, aren't as over the top. Maybe by the end, they will become so. And that's kind of the point. And maybe we'll see other characters with a lot more intense expressions throughout the series to show that they're already lost in that, but that Mary isn't yet. But yeah, my biggest my biggest question is still and will remain so until it reveals it. What happened to these other characters and why aren't they in the main series? I assume Sachiko's not at, at least not in the student council anymore because of what happens in this series i assume mary ending up defeating her in the end is going to get her like you know taken out of the council but why isn't she around anymore why isn't suzera around anymore or any of these other characters what happened to them that's the big question that's what i'm wondering more than anything i wonder if this series is going to explore that at all or if it's just going to leave that kind of open and maybe, if it does leave it open, maybe these characters could return in the future of the main series. It's possible, for sure. I, I would definitely love to see that. Um, but we will have to see as we continue along. Now, I'm going to state this now, and things might change based on, based on a various number of things, but... I'm going to say right now that my plan is I'm going to react to each episode separately. That means even for the last video, there, I'm, it's going to be only episode six. I'm not going to do five and six together. I'm not, going, I'm not going to do multiple episodes per video. I'm going to do each separately and only because it's six episodes. And yes, I did uh, with Obi-Wan and Miss Marvel. I did both of those with the last two episodes together. But I, I think I'm going to do. I'm th I think I'm going to do it differently with this, and and the thing is, unlike with Obi Wan and Miss Marvel, I don't have to wait. <laughs> uh, all six episodes are already out on Netflix, so I can just get to all of them right away if I wanted. I can pre-record them in advance, so that's not going to be as big of an issue. But because, it's, like I said, because it's six episodes, I, I think I'm just going to do them all on their own, each for their own separate video. Um, it's usually only for a series that are longer or whatnot that I'll combine for episodes because I want to keep watching, you know? And hell, I, I, there might be points in this, in these six episodes where it's like, oh yeah, I definitely want to keep watching, but I'll hold off and do a separate video for it, you know? That's my plans. Unless anything changes, and for some reason I feel like I need to, uh, do them together. I'm, unless anything makes me feel like that, I'm going to do them separately. Um, so, tell me in the comments below, what did you think of this first episode of Kakegurui Twin? And for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.